Now there are two layers in our layer stack. The basketball court at the bottom of the stack as the background, and the basketball on top of it in the foreground. Let's click and drag the basketball to move it to the bottom of the stack. The yellow outline is still visible because the layer is still selected, but now the basketball court image is in front of the basketball. If we move this image, as you'll see later, the basketball still exists but is entirely hidden by the foreground. You can reorder these layers at any time. Use the edit menu to click on undo multiple times to go back to the original order. Later we'll go over how you can reset transform settings. As we create this project together, remember to save it under different versions. This way you can easily go back if you have any issues. You'll see a small asterisk appear on the right of the project name, indicating that the project has been modified since its last save or load. By going to File, Save Project, you'll notice that the asterisk disappears. This means that the project has been saved in its current state. We'll give the viewer a bit more space by using the divider bars that separate the panels. The layer stack gives us a first glimpse of what's in the background and what's in the foreground, starting from the bottom of the stack. But if the timeline isn't fully visible, and you work primarily in the viewer, there's another way to know what's at the bottom of the stack. The visual stack is a tool that's accessible via the button at the top right, or by pressing the V key. It displays thumbnails of the different layers stacked in the same order as in the layer stack. You can select these layers by clicking on them, then use the mouse wheel to move up or down in the stack or click and hold down the left mouse button to navigate through it. The thumbnails stretch or shrink the content of the layers to make them all the same size. Selections between this visual stack and the layer stack are synchronized. You can see that selecting either of these layers also selects them in the layer stack. This visual stack is particularly useful when some elements are completely hidden by other layers just like here with the basketball, which is entirely hidden behind the basketball court. It's a good way to find a layer that might not be visible on screen. Reordering layers, however, is done exclusively through the timeline in the layer stack. The layer stack is also useful when the viewer is maximized. Each of the panels can be maximized to take up your entire screen. The menu at the top right of each panel gives you a Maximize Panel option. In a case like this, the visual stack makes sense because it allows you to select any layer, even those that are not visible, because they're completely hidden by other ones. When you go back to this menu, you can see that this command has been replaced by the Minimize Panel option. To quickly maximize or minimize a panel, you can use the shortcut Control or Command plus the spacebar. Just place your cursor over the panel you want to maximize, use the shortcut to maximize it, and then use the same shortcut again to minimize the panel. Take some time to practice maximizing and minimizing panels, as well as showing or hiding the visual stack using the V shortcut. In this video, we went over how to reorder layers in a composition, use the visual stack, and determine if a project has been modified since its last load or save.